Okay, I'm at the stage with my M715. It's a 1968 military Jeep pickup truck. It is a hodgepodge of colors. It's Air Force blue, it's Army green. Uh, Army green on the right side of the cab and fenders. Air Force blue on the left side. Who knows? I don't know if the Air Force painted it blue, uh, the Navy painted it blue, or some civilian owner later in life painted it blue. Anyway, this thing's a little bit of a mess. Um, so, uh, we've got a mixture here. We've got a 12 volt starter, a 12 volt alternator, and a 24 volt coil. So obviously I can't start this thing by just hooking up a battery and trying to crank it. I've got to do some special work. Part of that special work has been to take the uh, number 12 wire there, which goes directly to the distributor and coil, and wire that to the second half of a series of 12 volt batteries. I don't need the same size batteries here because I'm only powering the coil, which should use very, very little power. Um, but I do need this big battery, this big 12 volt, to run the starter because that's going to take a little bit of juice. So I wire them in series. I'm going to tap the uh, jumper cables on here to go to the starter, and I'm only going to run the starter. I'm not going to power the truck's entire electrical system and only power the coil. So when I'm ready to start it, I'll flip this switch here, turns on the coil, sends power to the coil, I should say. Um, and then I'll crank it off this 12 volt battery. Um, and you just, I'm not sure if I explained that clearly. What I've got here is I'm going to run a series. This will get connected to the body for ground. This hot runs through this cable to the negative of this battery. Positive out of this side now is 24 volts between the truck body and this point, this battery terminal. Since I need 24 volts to run the coil, that wire goes directly out to the coil. I mean, it runs through the cab and the chassis and everything and the harness, but that wire goes right to the coil. So I need 12 volts for the starter and 24 volts between the two of these to run the coil. So it's a hybrid system. It will not run this way. This will definitely get fixed. It's just going to be this way to determine if the engine runs. So I got a camera mount up here. I'm going to go ahead and stick my phone in there to mount it. Hopefully you get a nice good view from here. And I'm all wired up. <clears throat> My jumper cables are attached. Let me see if I can swing down and show that. Yeah, kind of. Anyway, I'm going to now try cranking it dry with uh, no power to the coil and nothing in the carb just to circulate the oil. Okay. It's probably not circulating much oil, but still. Now I will give it a blast of uh, starting fluid. And from there, I'll turn on the coil. Okay, I want to look quickly before that evaporates. Crack the start. And it started, but my starter just lost its thing. Holy cow, that thing just jumped. Let's give it a little more fluid. Alright, let's try it again. First time in 30 something years, or 20 something years. All right, every time it starts, the starter disengages. Something's not right. Okay, let's get some more fluid in there. I'm using very little because I don't want to blow the engine apart. I'll try again. under the recommended amount, but let's see what it does. Why is it doing that? Have a bad starter, bad shim or something? Okay, pause the video for a second. And I suspect that the um, <clears throat> ignition was not actually doing anything uh, when I turned the ignition on. I think what's probably happening is when I spray this stuff in, it's probably uh, igniting by compression. This engine's only got 8,000 miles, so even though it's sat for a long time and the rings could be stuck and it could have no compression, 
it could also have really good compression. Uh, these engines, it was only 7.5 to 1, but um, that still could be enough to ignite ether or starting fluid. So that's my suspicion right now is that the ether is actually starting by compression and not by spark. So I'm going to try again uh, with spark and uh, see what we get. Keep your fingers crossed. I just had to stop the video, let everything cool down a little bit, and then I'll try again. Or now I'll try again. The starter keeps doing that. Every time the motor jumps, the starter disengages. Just when I need it most. That's enough boring video for one day. Time to go back to the drawing board. Perhaps I'll go buy a distributor and a coil.